Well, the first thing was that I met this woman who, that was her specialty. She edited YA. And so I knew that I, I've always tried to, if you have an opportunity to work with a mentor who you think is a good fit, that you jive well with, I try to always take advantage of that because, um, you know, and now I'm further on in my career and I try to mentor people myself as, as much as I'm able. And Sarah was a really good mentor uh, for me. She really um, helped me find my voice and, um, through that process, I began to realize that the young adult landscape is very wide and, and diverse. Um, there was the beginnings of, of actual diversity in the material, which was really appealing to me. Um, you know, when I was in high school back in the 90, 80s and 90s, uh, a lot of books were, you know, very very straight, very white, very suburban. The characters all looked and sounded and, and behaved the same way. Um, but you know, in the early 2010s, that was starting to change. We were seeing more queer voices, we were seeing more people of color, um, more marginalized voices, and that was really, you know, exciting. Um, and I think it was on the forefront of literature in general, um, which is something that I think characterizes uh, YA overall, is that young adult novelists often take risks that haven't yet drifted into the, the mainstream. You can look at the, go to your local chapters and look at the young adult section, pick out five or six random titles and you'll you will get um that copy that tells you uh that that points you towards six completely different stories set up in completely different worlds the real world uh you know different cities outer space different like imaginatively created fantasy world um so basically the sky is the limit and uh i i think that as a writer that's really empowering it's really in encouraging to know that you know there's an audience out there for basically any story that you can come up with if you can figure out how to do it in a compelling way and so ya for me became a re really good fit and uh i you know i haven't looked back i think at some point i would like to go back to that adult mystery and see if i could pull it off uh but i've you know this this path, this young adult path has been so rewarding for me. I've met so many wonderful young readers, uh, readers of all ages, but in particular, young readers who um, I'm just constantly blown away by their, you know, intelligence and their creativity and their humor. Um, I can't say enough about this genre and the, and the readers of it. One of the things that I really appreciate about young readers is that they, they are less willing to filter their perspectives so if they don't like something they will tell you or if they have a question that might be a bit awkward about your material they'll ask it i find that that's not as common um, when people grow up a little bit more and and you know feel like these social constraints i i love going into a high school class and basically all bets are off you can people ask me basically anything and i love that i feel like it's very open the conversations are open and and free and um Clearly, people want to talk about the media that they're consuming, um, and I'm happy that I'm able to, you know, in my own little way, contribute to that landscape of, of uh, you know, books and movies and you name it. So one of the messages I try to bring out to uh, teen writing groups, but I say this to everybody who, you know, every group of aspiring writers, is that it is if you feel the calling, if you feel that you should be writing, uh, you know, playing music, making short films, you name it. If you feel that call into the creative arts, you should lean into that um, because there are immense rewards in the creative lifestyle. And put aside all thoughts of publication or, you know, movie deals, any of that stuff. Do it for the love of the work and the rest of it will play itself out.